December 2021. This was where my love for planted aquariums first started. When my pet hamster died, I had a 10 gallon tank that I used for its enclosure. Instead of getting another furry mammal though, I decided to attempt to build an aquarium with live plants. I was captivated about the abilities of underwater plants to thrive anaerobically. In fact, ever since I was a kid, I had this idea that it would be so cool to see plants underwater, like an aquatic jungle. Even for me now, being 15 years of age, there's just something about underwater plants that makes my eyes sparkle with joy and curiosity whenever I see them. Maybe it's the fact that they stand so still and peacefully in the water, swaying with the movements of the currents, or the yellowish rich brown hue to the water that glows on the glass and illuminates the plants inside. I've always loved plants and moss, and having seen that other people could grow them underwater inspired me to build a planted aquarium. First, I would need to do a lot of research. Initially, I started with whatever information I can find on the internet. Aquarium, Wikipedia, blogs, articles, tweets, posts, subreddits, videos on YouTube, and online aquarium groups. I sloppily wrote down notes on all the things I learned while researching, which include the nitrogen cycle, snails, shrimp, floating plants, water pH, aqua soil, and basic stuff like that. I learned a little from this research, but as I continued, I also became increasingly confused and skeptical about some things that I read about. For instance, having to do frequent water changes, gravel vacuuming, using water conditioners, water-soluble fertilizers, algae preventative chemicals, and excessive cleaning just to keep the aquarium looking in good condition. I skimmed through these with the intention of not wanting to do a lot of maintenance and adding chemicals to the aquarium. I knew that it was possible, but I just didn't know how. That was until I stumbled upon the book Ecology of the Planted Aquarium by Diana Wallstead. As I read, things immediately started making sense and I was able to connect all of my abstract ideas together. In the book, Diana Wallstead describes how plants are actually critically important to the success of the aquarium and are not just for decorations. I learned how one can grow beautiful, lush, underwater jungles without the use of chemical fertilizers, water changes, and gravel vacuuming, but instead with things like plants, organic matter, and patience. All of this is like mimicking nature and the raw processes that occur in wild aquatic ecosystems all over the world. I instantly fell in love with this hobby and I thought about aquariums all the time, to the point of even having dreams about it. During this researching phase, I also took notes on what I read as a way to confirm my understanding. The next day at school, I would describe in detail what I've read the other day to my friend. These two methods, the writing down and teaching someone what I've learned, helped me tremendously in the understanding of this hobby. This way, one is not only gaining information, but also sharing it. I made so many notes and read Ecology of the Planted Aquarium in its entirety, paying attention to small, crucial details to be able to know how to build my aquarium. At one point, I was so hyped about aquariums, I knew exactly what kinds of animals I was going to get and what kinds of plants would grow best following the Wallstad method. That summer, I was dead set on building my community fish tank until my family and I took off to Bulgaria for a three-month vacation. I am very grateful that we got to visit so many cool places, and I just thought about aquariums the whole time. I thought about aquariums every day, and despite this time away from pursuing my passion, I didn't lose spirit because I wanted one that badly. Finally, when we came back home, I bought plants from the aquarium store and set up my first Wallstad Method planted aquarium.
Um, but it's a walk out aquarium, it doesn't usually happen like this, but it is growing, so yeah, that means there's a lot of carbon and it's conditions that it's living in are favorable.
My favorite thing about this aquarium is that on sunny days, around 2.30 to 4 o'clock, the rays of the afternoon sun are in perfect alignment to strike the aquarium and flood it with the most beautiful natural sunlight, illuminating the creations of Mother Nature in such an enchanting golden glow. For me, having an aquarium isn't just another thing to clean or for keeping fish and breeding aquatic fauna, but instead having a slice of nature that reminds me of the great biodiversity outside that isn't restricted within a small volume of water within five panes of glass in the home aquarium. <laughs>